My name is Kristen Adamson. I'm 25 years old and I'm on a journey of self-discovery. When I was 18 years old, um, my journey began. Um, and it happened when I was walking down the street one night about six o'clock and uh, I was struck by a vehicle as I was crossing the street. Um, it changed my life. I think most people who go through experiences like that um, where it's a near-death experience, you can't help but make your life change. Um, my whole belief in the way we should live our lives changed. My values, my visions, um, just everything changed. Um, thankfully, I mean, I'm here today and I survived, but it was a painful process, um, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, it was a struggle. Um, it was probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to overcome. Um, it was a hit and run, so, you know, in that moment, it was, it was lonely. It didn't stop there. <laughs> I wish I could say it did, but, uh, you know, I did fall into a pretty deep um, level of depression. And, um, and then not soon after, when I was 20, um, is when I got the worst news of my life. Um, I was diagnosed with something called premature ovarian failure, um, also known as premature ovarian insufficiency, which essentially means that um, my ovaries don't function and um, I have a zero to five percent chance of ever conceiving naturally. It was so tough, so tough to um, to be told that the thing I wanted most in the world um, might not ever happen for me. You know, 5% or less are not great odds. Um, so it was a, it was a low blow. Um, I think as a female, we go most of our lives kind of assuming that when we're ready to have children, the choice is ours. Um, we can just make it happen. Um, but that's not really the case. I knew mentally I had the power to change how I was thinking. I couldn't change my circumstance, but I could definitely change how I chose to see it. Um, I'll never lose hope, never. Um, I think hope is important. However, I'm going to rechannel my energy. And uh, I decided to, to seek things that I could control and um, that brought me into fitness, actually. Uh, it brought me into bodybuilding. And now I live my life as a bodybuilder, as a female bodybuilder. I've done one competition in the fitness model category um, through the IDFA, um, placed second. That was my first show. And I do plan to do some more. Um, but I decided to channel my energy towards things that I could change. And that was my body and that was my mind. Now I'm an avid uh, promoter of fitness and, and wellness and health um, and, uh, and, and that's, taken me, that's taken me to great places, that's taken me further. Um, however, there's still, that, there's still that missing link. Um, I still feel like my purpose is untapped. Um, you know, as a woman, I think we, we kind of assume like our, our purpose is to, you know, as bad as it sounds, procreate, you know, our, our purpose is to hold a child, raise a child, give a child a home. Um, but I'm learning that um, being a mother doesn't necessarily mean you have to biologically be a mother. It means that you have that love, that, that the, the heart to give over to a child, to raise a child and give a child a home. 
as a part of my journey of self-discovery um, you know I've come to a point where I've become a little bit more comfortable with the notion of adoption it's something that has actually funny enough it's something that was kind of in my my brain prior to learning of my diagnosis um, but I'm at a point where I'm just so much more curious about it and um, and I want to I want to learn more about the world of it but from a different angle not just the you know going to an adoption agency and learning of the process I want to learn more about it from the child's perspective um, which is why I am on a mission to um, take a, a volunteer journey to Kenya um, and work in an orphanage. More and more I, I, I research about the orphanages and what the children need and the kind of interaction that they crave, the more I want to be a part of that. Um, so my plan is to travel to Kenya with Project Abroad um, and spend anywhere from two to three weeks there um, volunteering in the orphanage. I wish I could do longer, um, but it is, is rather costly and I understand why, but this is why I'm, I'm looking for help. Um, visiting Kenya, I hope to accomplish um, a multitude of different things. One, to, you know, see Kenya. Um, two, to really get some time to interact with these children that have no mother. Um, and, and ultimately help me redefine what it means to be a mother. Um, you know, to go and to care for these children that are not biologically mine, um, to spend some time with them, to understand their needs, to to see what kind of world they come from. Um, I really am hoping that it will open up my eyes and allow me the opportunity to give something back to these children. There are something like 700 children every day that are, you know, abandoned in Kenya. Um, and that's something like a, a child every two minutes. Uh, I can't imagine having been raised like that. You know, I was raised, my parents have been together for 32 years. I mean, I was raised in a whole different world and they gave me love and and just everything that any child could ever want and imagine but these children don't necessarily have that opportunity and I want to go and just give a little something I mean I want to give them my heart <laughs> normally um, I I'm not one to ever ask for help uh, my parents will be the first ones to tell you that. Most of my friends probably know that as well. I never ask for help. I can do everything on my own. That's the way I've always believed. Um, in this instance, I I, I am asking for help. <laughs> I'm just hoping that maybe I can touch somebody else out there with my story. Um, you know, who maybe also suffers from infertility, which impacts such a super huge portion of the world. You know, it's, it's crazy how much we, we don't really realize how many people suffer from the effects of infertility. Um, be that for maybe one year of infertility or 10, 20 years of infertility, a lifetime. Um, you know, each one of those people has suffered and it is it's just, I can't even put into words how painful that process can be. Yeah, if anybody can lend a hand, um, I have posted my campaign on my website on the front page, uh, www.kristenadamson.com. Um, and, you know, they can click on the campaign from there and learn more about it. Um, it's open, I believe, uh, it's open until the end of April um, 2014. So, you know, if anybody can help, that would be just, I would be eternally grateful. 
Um, you know, if you have any questions, you can email me as well at Kristen at KristenAdamson.com. Um, and you know, any questions or, or comments, I'm a very open person. Um, you know, I want to make a difference by sharing my story, my, my personal struggle. Um, I don't want to hide from infertility. Um, by hiding it, I'm allowing it to define me. I, I want to face it head on. I want to tell the world. And some people feel weird when you tell them. Um, but it doesn't matter to me. I think it's important that people know that, that there are people out there struggling. 